welcome back everyone for today's video we are going to be taking a look at a game that was played in the early title tuesday today july 2nd of the year 2024. now the game in question features the famous youtuber levy rossman playing against the self-proclaimed america's brightest talent and also america's first world champion grandmaster hans neiman now in this game levy has the white pieces they're playing three plus one hans outrates levy by more than 300 points in fact a little bit closer almost 400 so surely hans will beat this random youtuber right well let's jump right into the action so the game starts with the move e4 from levy hans plays c6 we get d4 and now the move d5 now one thing i don't like about this opening choice from hans is that levy rosman has done a lot of course on the Karl Khan. it's the opening he also played in the recent norm tournament in spain so let Levy should feel right at home, whereas if Hans played something a little bit less standard, he might confuse Levy out of the gates. So Levy here decides to play the move F3. Now, this is what is known as the classic fantasy variation against the Karl Khan. It's actually quite dangerous, and many top grandmasters have played it. I'd also point out that the famous streamer and grandmaster Benjamin Feingold has always said never push your F pawn, but in some cases, you do want to build the big white center. So we get F3. Hans plays to e6. We now get this move knight to c3. We have bishop b4, and now the move a3 played by Levy. Hans plays bishop a5. We get bishop to e3, and now the move knight e7. Bishop d3, knight d7, and now the move knight e2. And here Hans decides to trade the pawns in the center of the board. If Hans does not try to trade in the center right away, white actually is very, very nice development. You've developed both the b's. The knights are developed as well on e2 and c3, and you control a bit of the center with the pawns on f3, e4, and d4. So Hans trades, and now he plays the move e5. So after this move e5 is played here in this position, Levy now decides to play this move castles, and now we get the move castles being played by Hans. After castles, castles, we get the move bishop to c4, and now Hans plays the move knight g6. Now, what Hans could try to do is trade the pawns on d4. Keep in mind, this is a blitz game. Probably he was afraid of knight takes d4, knight g6, and then something like knife to f5 here, because white has this nice scoped bishop on the light square diagonal, as well as a knife on f5, which the famous world champion and one of the greatest players of all time, Gary Kasparov, mentioned a knight on f5 is worth at least one pawn. So, we get knight g6 being played and here levy goes d5 now i really like this choice because even though black has d's knights on d7 and g6 there is a pawn which stops either knight from going to this critical central square so we have bishop b6 levy plays queen d2 we get the move knight to f6 from hans levy plays h3 trying to stop the move knight g4 and here we have this move c takes d5 now this is a big mistake from hans neiman now one thing that a lot of people will recognize about hans is he's generally a tactical genius he likes to play sharp tactics and he also does a lot of puzzle rush but in this case hans simply is not up to the task in this position there is a tactic here where black can sack the knight on e4 and after knight takes knight takes pawn takes d5 suddenly the pawn forks the bishop and the knight and white actually can't save the material for example if white takes the bishop on b6 after queen takes bishop it's a check on the king and now you lose the bishop or the knight on the next turn if you play bishop takes pawn after swap 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 we can do the count black is uno dos tres cuatro cinco seis white has uno dos tres cuatro cinco so black has one extra pawn here Hans, however, misses this tactic, and instead he takes on d5. Levy takes back with the pawn, and now we get the move bishop to d7. Levy plays rook a d1. Hans goes rook c8, and now we have the move bishop b3. Now, it's a pretty imbalanced position due to the central pawns here on e5 and d5. White can try to push p and push this pass pawn up the board. Black, actually, I would say is a little bit worse here, mainly because these knights don't have good squares in the center of the board, as everything is covered. So Hans goes knight h5, we get the swap, king to h2, and now this move f5. Now what Hans is trying to do here is he would love to push this pawn to e4, use these central pawns, maybe try to jump with these knights again, or maybe even play a move like queen d6 check, but Levy doesn't have to allow this. Now here, the computer is screaming for Levy to play this move d6, pushing p and checking the king on g8. And after king to h8 and this move knight to d5, white is doing very well. A sample tactic is queen takes pawn, queen g5 here hitting the knight on h5 if you move the knight we swap 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 and you lose the b on d7 now again a lot very easy to see this um in retrospect but levy does have the same idea in mind where he plays queen g5 first but unfortunately now after knight to f4 even if you try to go d6 king h8 you no longer have access to this d5 square as one of these knights will cover d5 so after knight hf4 we get the we get the swap of the horses and now the move queen e7 played by levy 
now again computer is screaming for this move d6 to be played followed by queen to e7 targeting the bishop on d7 because you have this pass pawn and after say queen d8 white can take a pawn if you play rook d8 i suspect it's the same you just take this pawn after knight g6 and queen d4 extra pass pawn in the center of the board and white is on cruise control so Levy instead plays queen e7 which is still good enough and here Hans again misses an opportunity with this move rook to d8 now what Hans should have played here is a sort of counterintuitive move queen to g6 threatening to checkmate the white king on g2 now probably the reason Hans did not play this is he probably thought well first of all white has g3 to kick the horse while attacking the bishop but even this move like rook takes f4 and surely black is in trouble but after pawn takes rook queen takes bishop check king h1 and f3 d6 king h8 suddenly the white king is very weak on the king side black is threatening to checkmate and as you guys can tell from the evaluation bar it is approximately equal so Hans plays this move rook to d8 after a 19 second thing clearly Hans just a little bit off not really feeling it as he misses queen g6 so after rook d8 we now get the move d6 being played we have king to h8 and here levy takes the pawn on e5 after knight g6 we get queen d4 played and at this point hans surely is feeling very very scared and afraid because for america's brightest talent he's now in real trouble and he's very likely going to lose to a youtuber and there's going to be some videos which are going to get hundreds of thousands of views um which is going to be very tough to swallow so after queen d4 we get the move queen to a5 levy goes rook e1 here another nice move putting the rook on the open lane both towers perfectly placed pass pawn in the center of the board and at this point Hans has to hope for a miracle so we get the move f4 levy plays rook to e7 here another really really strong move threatening to checkmate the black king on g7 here also if black takes this pawn forks the rook so it's a great attempt to sack the rook and in the process you also create the kebab and at this point it's really really close to lost so Hans plays rook f6 levy goes knight to e4 which apparently isn't the best move I guess knight e5 is supposed to be better for I don't know what reason because after knight e4 um I don't understand I actually don't understand what the difference is but he goes knight e4 which makes tons of sense putting pressure on the rook here you can't move the rook without getting mated on g7 so Hans goes queen f5 levy takes on f6 we get pawn takes knight pawn takes knight here and now we have the move queen e4 now for anybody who's watching this video this is not a stand this is not a stand-up comedy routine we're looking at a very very serious chess game played between two very serious players including the future american world champion so after queen e4 we have queen b5 being played here by hans levy plays queen d5 we got the swap of the queens and now levy is really very very happy because even though he's playing as Hans Neiman we are in an end game here so chance of Hans winning with Queens on the board they still exist but as soon as you get the Queens off the board now it is all over so we get Bishop c6 Levy plays rook f5 now this is a mistake here the computer actually wants to move rook e6 sack in the rook and with these four pawns on the Queen's side and the ability to go c4 c5 white is winning but Levy plays rook f5 instead now Hans captures and he goes rook to e8 after takes 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 and rook to e2 suddenly levy has thrown it all away now even though levy is up two pawns here the problem is that the pawn on c2 is weak the pawn on g2 is also weak and white is very passive so after rook g4 Hans plays this move h5 and this is sort of the final nail in the coffin here what Hans should play is this move h6 and the reason it's still very hard for white to win here is that after a move like king g1 check king f2 and rook b1 you're going to lose this pawn on b2 and it's not really clear how white is going to win the game so if you can't move the king to g1 you can't go to g3 because you hang the pawn on g2 you can't move a bishop without hanging a pawn so effectively all of white's pieces here are completely paralyzed it's very very hard to improve the position but instead Hans plays h5 here and now after rook g5 it's very very close to loss we get h4 rook to g4 played here and now the move king h7 now the computer still says after bishop f3 black is trying to hang on but at this point with seconds left on the clock and Hans being down or not Hans being down sorry both players being low on time it's not realistic to expect a comeback so we get king h7 takes king g6 rook g4 with king f5 and now rook g7 at this point levy is now up three pawns here as long as he can push some p on the king side he is going to win the game so we get king f6 rook g3 is played and now we have a5 and this move a4 played by levy after a4 we get the move bishop to e4 with this move h4 and now we get bishop c6 after bishop c6 we have this move h5 being played and now the move rook to e5 levy plays rook to h3 and now we have the move rook to g5 after rook g5 we get the move g3 being played king g7 and now h6 played by levy after h6 we get king to h8 
bishop to c4 rook f5 and now the move bishop d3 now some of these moves are not absolutely precise from levy but it's still good enough so we get rook f2 king g1 we have the move rook g2 king to f1 rook d2 and now the move rook h4 with the idea of bringing the rook to the center of the board and checkmating the black king on the h8 square after rook h4 we have to move rook g2 now we have rook to d4 hans captures we get check block takes takes h7 king g7 and now this move b3 to guard the pawns on the queen side and at this point hans is going to lose the game because white can simply run this king all the way up the queen side to win the game so we get bishop d5 king f2 bishop f7 king e3 bishop e6 king d4 bishop d7 and now after the move king to c5 hans neiman resigns this game because levy is just going to go up gobble some pawns and he's just going to push these pawns on the queen side and win the game so a tremendous performance from levy in this game he gets a huge win against hans neiman one of his best ones in title tuesday one of the games where it felt like he was very much in control from start to finish it wasn't a time scramble so much but he played a great game so a massive win for levy in this in this critical title tuesday game now that he would be on a three out of three score he'd lose some games later but nonetheless a fantastic performance so on that note i hope you guys have enjoyed this recap from the early title tuesday on july 2nd 2024 if you are not already subscribed to the channel make sure that you smash that subscribe button below and we will be back soon with some more great recaps here on youtube hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you guys very soon have a good one bye